On today's show, the book, Revenge of the Mistress, from the Love and Revenge series by Sydney Rax. This book is all about money. Yes. A whole bunch of money. A lot of money. Mm, lot of money. Lies. A Major lie. lie. Illusion. David okay. Copperfield. <laughs> <laughs> and some serious greed. Major. Are we ready for this? I think so. I Grab your cup. It's time for The, the Tea. It's a very interesting book because I think it touches on some topics that we don't really talk about. So we're going to start kind of at the bottom on this one. One of the things that was really very interesting in this one, a very powerful emotion in this particular book, was really about the power of greed. So we want to hear from you. When we think about greed, do you think about greed as something that drives a man? Or do you think about greed as something that drives a woman? When you think greed, what comes to mind? Um, men and women can both be greedy and, you know, even within a gender, people can be motivated by different things. Uh, as a group, women may be greedy about something different than men as a group may be greedy about, but I think it's just a human characteristic. Okay, okay, good, thank you. I think that the, uh, it's pretty equal in today's society, but I think the methods of attainment are different. Uh -huh. Women come use different methods as a man. Okay. 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 Yeah. I like that is, I like the different methods right. approach yeah. because in this book, yeah, oh, um, yeah, it's a little bit of both. On yeah. The method. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I think for me, what what kind of stands out also is that we, to an extent. I think we have to keep in mind it's also extremely cultural because if you were to compare that to potentially a Japanese culture in which a lot of the time the individual is not as important as the whole. So in terms of doing a lot of things, you always keep the group in mind. For example, a dinner. You, especially in Denmark as well, you get a small portion of food, whereas in America, I mean, it's like, I'm the first one up. <laughs> um, I put everything on my plate. But in terms of like, you know, family, you always, you're always keeping everyone in mind. And it's so interesting when I was there to kind of see like one piece and everyone's just kind of waiting because they're trying to be polite. Polite. So I think in terms of greed, it's, it's also cultural, um, but particularly for this um, book, I think what's also interesting too is that greed is a perspective, but what I took out of it was that she was extremely greedy even though she wasn't deserving. I can see mean? if somebody was working hard towards something. She wanted, you know, this this particular life that she dreamed about since she was young. Um, she wanted the the money, the the cars, all of this stuff, but she wasn't really the one working for it. Okay. Yeah. So I can, I can see, see somebody yeah. being greedy and at least working hard and and what? Well, maybe that's maybe that's just a, a different a that's different still, subject. Yeah. That would definitely be a different perspective on greed. But I think to go back to your original question, usually when we think about greed, we do think about it from a male perspective. And usually when you say greed with women, you think that they're going to use the sexual, uh, their hair, their body, whatever. But bingo! Well, wait, yes. wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> That's the book. That's yes. exactly what she did. Isn't, yep. that, yes. isn't that necessarily done to please the other sex because a guy and his car or his money and his no, house no, no. that's just no, no, no. to attain she, wait <laughs> she's doing it to please him no that's her right okay. but that's the point that's what the revenge is all about right so this is where there there are three women and they are bent on using their bodies and their sexual wiles like i couldn't win that with the whole hair thing you know i, I couldn't cannot. I, really how, how am i gonna flip this you can't Listen. flip this. There's no flipping. <laughs> well, I just think that we should get together soon. There's just different ways to be able to do it. So this is a book where they played off of that. Yeah. And when you read it, you're going to, this, this, when I was reading this book, I was like, no. <laughs> Say what? No. So there was a lot, there's a lot of that. I think it was also too around the issue of, is this an illusion? When you talked about 
greed being something that is not specific to a male or a female, and also about how you how how it's depicted, how it looks when okay. we talk about so greed. What I would say, you know, one of the characters in here, you're thinking about the characters and saying. Was she really greedy? Because she came from a lifestyle that she didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. So her form of attainment or what it was that she wanted, she found it in someone. But, you know, is that to say she was greedy or she was trying to get out of a situation? So in other words, herself? there's a line between greed and ambition. Right. But I, fa I still found Nicole extremely... Greed and ambition? Okay, no, that's, that's, that's interesting. I still found Nicole extremely problematic only because coming from a single... Uh, parent home and seeing the struggles of my mother mm -hmm. made me want to work harder. Mm -hmm. Her, it's like she she was it blinded it. by it. Her mom was like, sweetie, I'm sorry, I can't, you know, afford this. And she would take it as, you, you're you not doing this for me. Mm -hmm. So, as though she took that as, I deserve this because, you know, my mom didn't work hard enough. And I'm like, woman, you didn't learn anything. <laughs> I, I <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, but that's coming up in a single family home. I didn't come up in a single family home. So I was like, I didn't, some of the stuff that she, the mother had said to her, that's a whole different, that, um, can we talk about that? Sure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the mother-daughter relationship in here was an illusion as well, because on the outside looking in, you thinking that, well, she had an illusion of what family should look like. Right, okay. that's true. And okay. what she yeah. thought that her mother was, like, not doing for her, the mother was actually trying to do for her, but because of her attitude, and again, because of the way she, her mm. perception okay. and right. the way she acted out, the mother was like, well, I was going to give it to you, but you started acting exactly. a complete nut-nut, so exactly. that's why I just told them to cancel the layaway. Exactly. And so how many times have we done that with our children and we even with family yeah. members that we're trying to help, but then they start going nut-nut and crazy. Thing. And you just say, forget it. But here's the thing. Is that viewed as being revengeful? Is it viewed as being revengeful? When you say, because you're not doing this thing or because you didn't do this thing over here that I wanted you to do, you're shaking your head. Why are you shaking your because head? Because in life, you have to realize that you're not just going to get everything as if it's deserving to you. You know, there are consequences. And when you do something wrong, you're not going to get it. If you show up to work to work late 10 times, they're going to fire you eventually. So, so is this practice then? Is that what we're doing? We're saying it's conditioning. Okay. And then are we drawing a thin line between revenge and consequences? But, but no. But going... Okay, yes, over here. I see your hand. What does that have to do with the young lady's motivation for greed? Like, what is her motivation for greed grounded in? I mean, I, that would be my question. What is her motivation for greed, greed grounded, grounded in? in? Because see, there, there appears that there's some form of sense of entitlement from and the game. Absolutely. And that's like where it's she's grounded. just totally entitled. I want this better life by hook or crook. Yeah. Right. And I'll do it on the back of you or you or you. You have it. I want it. And I'll use whatever wiles, a subtlety, a seduction, yeah, whatever it is that it takes for me to get that method of, of attainment once yeah. again. Right. And that's even what she says, states in the book as well. Everything in life is conditional. There are conditions for everything. Mm -hmm. You do this, you get that. You don't do this, you don't get that. My son... If he doesn't do his homework, he doesn't get to play basketball. Mm -hmm. That's it. The homework isn't done. Guess what? You're not going to practice tomorrow. Conditions for everything. So it wasn't vengeful on the part of the mom. Okay. That's it. If you do this, I can't do this for you unless this happens. Conditions for everything. Right. Okay. And you know, bottom line. So, so yeah. That, that, yeah, that was great. But people have to be people have to be taught that. Yeah. And I think where it became an issue with the character in the book that we read is that she wasn't taught that. The, the mother and the her, there was no communication. no communication. That was a difference. So had the mom said, oh, the reason why, then maybe she would have not been, and we're talking about attainment, going by hook or crook, like you stated before, trying to get what she wanted, what she felt was a better life or a better way. 
But I would Which think she felt that she was see, entitled to. I, th- I would think that you see that by how hard her mother was working. She was stating that, you know, her and her sister were taken care of by her mom. Her mom had multiple jobs. Her mom was doing all of this stuff. How do you not see that when your mom comes home and she's like, I just cannot. She's a kid, a teenager. Yeah, but even when you become of age and you're able to understand that you need to to work for yourself. You have to explain it. You have to explain it. If you don't explain it, look, if you don't explain, then people are going to come to their own conclusions. That's it. And they're either going to say, I'm going to be just like that, or I'm going to be the total opposite. I'm not going to work that hard when I could just lie down. Why should I do that True, when I could just... True, but I thought so, her... Well, like you said, it was, it potentially was communication because even when she, she got upset at her mom because her mom didn't help her for college mm-hmm. um, and she had to work, you know, herself to get through it. But I would think that that would have taught her something, working for yourself. But the thing is, she didn't do it because she was taught. She did it because right. she knew that my mama not gonna help me, so I got to get this done by right. any means necessary. It wasn't until her wedding that the mother said, um, explained that, hey, I was doing this for you. And and I think... and, and I think we got she was. Right, but I still... Right, that. and I think the mother was kind of like doing a, um, what you call it, a... Uh, Loving, loving, loving in a way where you just have to push them oh, without you, explaining exactly. to them. You step back and sit just again, let them. Somebody said, tough, tough love, love. Tough that's love. it. Yeah. She was given tough love, but never said, you know, never explained it. And, right. then, the, and then, then she said, you know, why didn't you tell me right. it was my prom dress or the mortgage? Why didn't you tell me that I'm sitting here um, thinking that we're not knowing that we only one paycheck away from the lights being off and us being so on the street? So that brings us to this question in relationships. When we talk about When we talk about family, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's what this is. It's a relationship between a mother and a daughter and understanding the roles that we play in terms of how we interact. Do we, as family members, have an obligation to explain ourselves more? I think it's generational. Do, Do we have an obligation to explain ourselves more? Because we're looking at a story that's based on what that lack of explanation led to. Yeah. Right. Okay, so, yes. Okay, it seems like um, from what you're saying that in the book, there's like multiple stages of ages Mm -hmm. that we're going through. And you don't tell your children everything when they're young. You're still trying to shelter them and shield them and give them more like the best life that you can possibly give them. And they don't have to know all the struggles with their younger. But then as they grow older, then you start to express more and more to them about maybe so they can understand where you were coming from as a parent. Mm -hmm. So for that, I would think that maybe when the child was, when she was younger and she was upset with her mother and maybe having a tantrum, right. you know what I mean? It's because, you know, her mom's not going to tell her everything. Right. It's right. none of your mm-hmm. business right. that, you know, that my bills can't be paid. Just be happy that you have the clothes on your back right. and you're going to school right. Right. and be as happy as you can be. But then as you become older and maybe when college came to, came to play, because you said to talk about college, then she'll say, okay, well, my mom can't afford it. And maybe the way her mother was kind of, you know, talking talking to her, she thought it was out of spite when more so it's out of circumstance. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, so. And that's where the explanation comes in. Do right. you have, is it your place then to explain why you were, they're older. We're not talking about yeah, the 10-year-old, yeah, they're, they're but they're adult. older now as a young adult to explain. Because I know growing, the, the, like the culture that I'm from, you Jamaicans know this from Jamaica. Right? Jamaica. It is... Do as I say. Exactly. Speak when you're spoken to and you don't ask any questions. Exactly. Right? So when you grow up in that kind of a culture, there isn't... My mom is now 81 and I'm still like, well, can I ask a check? Who are you talking to? So even at that age, I'm like, mom, I'm 55. I really am 55. (laughs) When you're 55, your your mom still treats you like a kid. So it's a matter of can you, should you explain? But Should again, you like explain? you said, it's cultural because this book is set where I'm from. This book is set in the South. And in the South, it's the same thing. Do as I say, not as I do. You speak when you're spoken to. And in that generation, you were supposed to learn by what you saw, going back to what you With said. With no communication? With no communication because it's like communication is the new thing. You know, at first you just got a beating and it was just is what it is. <laughs> you ain't asked no it. questions. I'm sorry. You ain't asked no questions. You were just, right. you were just beat down and it is what it is. Now, but, but at least see, you knew why but, you got a beating. Not all the time. If it was three of y'all, you didn't know because you knew somebody <laughs> had did something so everybody gets a beating. Oh, I mean, come on. Everybody. And so, but I saw the difference in the generations because I have a brother that's 18 years younger than me. So I saw the difference between the way my mother raised him 
and the way she raised us because we didn't get the explanation. We didn't get the time out. We mm. didn't get the, uh, we going to talk. We got, you better sit down. You know, right. if you move, you getting beat down right. and move again, you get beat down again. Yeah. Now she, well, you know, this is why we're, <laughs> And, and I'm you're like, like, who is that strange like, woman? Is right. What is going on? <laughs> so, but I think it's generational and I think that we've evolved. Go ahead. I think a lot of what this comes down to is whether or not, you know, how you see parenting, whether mm -hmm. or not a parent is a teacher right. to empower you to be able to make your own way in the world or your parent is your, you know, hand, handmaiden. Because frankly, sometimes getting things explained to you can be disempowering because when you go out in the world in life, everyone's not going to explain. You this know, the weather's not going to explain why it's raining when you don't want it to rain. Exactly. And that's that's something that you have to deal with as well in life. So I think there are, you know, you can get value out of out of either pattern. It's just, you know, when you're grown up, you have to decide that you're responsible now. And if you're still talking about, you know, what mama did to, you know, explain why you did something unethical, mm -hmm. you know, right. then you're not a grown up. <laughs> clearly, and clearly, clearly no. and clearly, right. drop mic exit stage left. Exactly. Okay. And, and I think someone else had know. another statement. Yeah. You and then this gentleman here. Oh, I was going to share. I believe you're always communicating. There's no way that you're not. Sometimes the communication is shut up. Uh -huh. I don't want to explain myself. Exactly. Bam, but boom. it's about being clear to yourself that this is a message that I'm communicating. I think a lot of times, right. especially parents right. think, if I don't say anything, I'm not saying anything, but you are. And also when we know communication, 87% is nonverbal, yeah. mm -hmm. it's like, even when we're not saying something, we're communicating through our exactly. eyes, through our expressions, Body language. Um, mm -hmm. with our children and the people in our lives. Exactly. So I think we're always communicating, but we need to make that choice about what is it that I actually want to communicate. And perception. Bingo. Right. That's it. Excellent. That's exactly. it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So here's the interesting thing about the sharing that you have brought given that you've not yet, <laughs> not yet read this book. What you talk about is what this book is actually about. Mm -hmm. It's about the lack of communication, the not sharing, the understanding that what was being done was in fact sharing, the conclusions that the individuals came to based on what they saw and the devastating impact that it had on their lives. Mm -hmm. This is actually what Revenge of the Mistress is all about. Yeah. Because there are some devastating consequences that resulted from what they saw, what they wanted, and then the decisions that were made about how to get it and how they're related to each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know that we also have two books to be able to share with the audience so that you can see how near or far you are from <laughs> what you thought about <laughs> the book. Oh, yeah. Yes. So okay. we're going to shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. So we can do our giveaways shake, shake, shake. here. Yes. Oh. Okay, okay. There you go, Sheree. All right, all right. Jig, 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 jig. Toya. Woo! Yeah! 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 That's a lot. What's <laughs> going on? Oh, wait. I don't have my glasses. Lord. Anthony Frazier. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Congratulations! Oh my yes. <laughs> okay, ladies, it's time for us to spill the tea on Revenge of the Mistress. I would have to say this is a must read. Now, this re it, it, got, it has a lot of twists and turns and suspense. It'll take yeah. you on a roller coaster. Yeah. You'll be you'll it, it's it's a lot of characters. But once you figure, once you get it all together, you're gonna be like, ooh, yeah. yeah. And you're gonna be like, hey, what, what? Yeah. So yeah, I would have to recommend this book. Sheree. Um, Sheree. <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> it was okay. Um, I, my perspective is just mainly on the themes and the fact that um, as opposed to me having a negative perspective, when I keep an open mind and kind of tie into the themes and things that can kind of tie into my life and what's going on, that's where I make the connection. Okay, good one. You're not like drama, right? <laughs> yeah. Drama! Yes. <laughs> read it. I did, I read it twice. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yes, I, love, I like the book. You like the book? A lot. Okay. 
All right. Drama. No said. Drama filled. I didn't say ratchet. It's good, but, it's good. but no. But, but, but so, it actually isn't, though. So it is, no, no, but it's not. This right. is the thing. It's not ratchet. Mm -hmm. So surprise, surprise. I actually like this one mm -hmm. because it represented themes that are real, that we could all yeah. connect to. You haven't read it yet, but you will. It's something we could all relate to. Yeah. So really, Absolutely. for this one, definitely, I raise my cup. Thanks for watching. Subscribe on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and share your comments. Let's keep this conversation going and growing. And remember, who's telling your story? The team! Special thanks to Harlem School of the Arts for hosting this segment of The Tea. We especially thank Kensington Publishing for sponsoring today's show.